In the book Refactoring by Martin Fowler, Martin Fowler, the author, tells the story of him and Kent Beck when they're on an airplane. So Kent Beck is usually denoted as the father of XP, the methodology extreme programming. And as the story goes, they're pair programming on this airplane. And Martin Fowler says that this is sort of the first time he really in practice comes in contact with the idea of using the pieces that are outlined in the book. In other words, judiciously following rules, refactoring code by performing those small pieces of actions in combinated series. So what I want to quickly talk about is that idea. If you haven't read the book Refactoring, it's essentially a cookbook of refactoring recipes. Remember, refactoring is the idea of re-architecturing code, rewriting code, without changing the behavior of the code. So the program stays the same, but you've rebuilt it in a different way. The idea behind this is, of course, that you would try to maintain the architecture of your application to, uh, let's say, keep it healthy. So I would guess that most of us believe that refactoring generally is a good idea. However, I would also guess that many of us recognize themselves in that refactorings are not always easy and can many times be painful. Painful for you, the performer of the refactoring, and painful for potential colleagues who have to wait for you to complete your refactoring. So previously, I myself have viewed refactoring as something that you enter and then it will take a long, long time before you fully exit because the nature of refactoring demands that you stay in the refactoring for a long time. Let me be more specific. If you follow the way that Martin Fowler uses the term refactoring, refactoring does not mean a massive rewrite in a single pass, in a single go, right? in a single session or over a, a consecutive series of days without ever performing a commit. Rather, refactoring means to incrementally move the system towards a healthier state, to take small healthy steps that bring your application into towards a better direction, towards a better architecture. But at each of these small steps, the code base is still functioning. The program is still working. The software can still be delivered. And this is the key point. So back to the plane story. The way I understand it, it seems that Martin Fowler is saying that that's the first time when he really felt that, ah, Kent Beck, when they're pair programming in that session, is actually taking small, deliberate, controlled steps when rewriting his code. He's not saying, oh, I've got this great idea of a superb architecture. Let's rip out all the pieces and try to stitch everything back up. It seems he implies that they know the futility of that kind of behavior. They know how often you instead end up in a situation where you're failing to stitch the pieces back together or where your idea of where you were going turns out to be a bad idea. And then you simply bail out halfway. So while I would highly encourage you to read the book Refactoring, as even though it talks about things that are very familiar to a lot of us, it gives us names to things, which mean that we can talk about them, and in discussion with other programmers, we can be less ambiguous about what we're meaning. So if you would say extract method or extract class when you're pair programming with someone, that person would know exactly what refactoring you're referring to. And perhaps even more importantly, they would know that you mean a certain set of steps, but not anymore. So it's not that you're implying that you would perform a larger refactoring. You're just saying, okay, let's just start or at this step, let's just do extract method, right? And see where we should go from that, right? You can still have a, an idea of what you want your architecture to look like in the future. You can still have a, a grandiose idea, but it's important to take that small step to put yourself in a new state where all the tests are passing and the build is passing and you can actually ship the software because you haven't broken anything. You've just refactored a very small piece of the application. So again, while I highly recommend that book, let me, let me give you a short, more concrete idea. This is something I've been thinking about lately. Perhaps a way to approach refactorings is to have that idea of where you want to go, right? I mean, it's, it's I guess as programmers, I, at least for me, it feels inevitable to think about that grandiose architecture where I'm trying to go, right? But refrain from ripping out multiple pieces and uh, aggressively moving towards that design. Instead, ask myself the question, what is the smallest change I can make that helps me make the next change towards that big change easier right it's it's kind of like that saying when you need to perform a change make the change easy 
refactor the system so that the change is easy and then make the change. Kind of similar to this, right? When you have an idea of a, of a better architecture, instead of aggressively moving towards that, ask yourself, what is the smallest step I can take that puts my application in a, in a state where it's easier to perform the next change or another change that moves me towards that uh, final state that you're looking for? What I've found especially interesting about an approach like this is that I often find myself in the situation where I, try, I embark on one small step and as that step unfolds, as I, try to, as I try to perform that refactoring by, you know how when you rewrite something, you cascadingly have to rewrite dependencies. So as you embark on the journey of rewriting dependencies, I might re may realize that I'm suddenly rewriting a lot of stuff which makes me a bit uneasy. So I stop and I step back and I say, okay, wait, if I look at the pieces that I've now refactored, is it possible for me to, instead of doing it the way I'm currently doing it, find one, one smaller piece uh, in the set of things that I'm doing currently and refactor only that thing and then commit, right? Put that into source control. So that often re results in me throwing away the changes I've made, right? or git stashing them so that I can uh, peek at them to look at sort of where my thinking went. But definitely throwing it away and starting over and doing only that small thing. Because if you think about your application tree, it might be natural for you to start at a branch when you're refactoring. But then as you're digging down that branch, you'll realize that that branch have a bunch of sub branches and suddenly your refactoring is bigger than you were perhaps intending. And at that point, you can probably locate a sub-branch further down the branch you, you wanted to refactor and refactor only that instead. So that I've found to work extremely well because then you are refactoring in small steps. You can commit in one change and then sort of take your mind off of that piece because you know that that piece is working which also reduces the size of your diffs and reduces the size of your commits which at least makes me uh, more at ease. So when you're refactoring, ask yourself the question, what is the smallest change that I could possibly make that would bring me closer towards the state where the next change I want to make is easier? When you're moving towards a greater refactoring. If you're used to doing something similar, feel free to outline that in the comments as I and I'm sure that others would massively appreciate it. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.